You okay there? I can't believe you two had sex in her dream. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, it was a one-time thing. I was very drunk and it was someone else's subconscious. <laughs> We all know Matthew Perry is one of the most relatable characters on Friends. Who didn't have problems with their love life? Who was always satisfied with their job? And who had the perfect childhood? He was funny, kind, and caring on screen. SAG, Emmy, and even a Golden Globe nominee. The whole package of a 90s heartthrob. But what about his off-screen life then and now? Why can't he recall major events and plot points in our favorite show? Are Matthew and Chandler the same person? How is he connected to Canada's Prime Minister? Could it be any more exciting? Could you want her more? Could we be more white trash? Could I be more sorry? <laughs> Keep watching the video to unfold the story, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Matthew Perry's acting career began in 1988 with a role in a small film called A Night in the Life of Jimmy Reardon Opposite River Phoenix. A few years and many guest roles later, he scored the part of Chandler Bing and instantly became a success. The actor seemed to have it all. The first time he ever got onto the cover of People magazine, he sent it to one of his old teachers who said Matthew would never do anything of value if he kept joking around. Well, wasn't that a misconception? He made a career out of making people laugh, swoon, and have a good time. But deep inside, he was dealing with the greatest battle of his life. All the superficial things about fame came true, he told people in 2002 of the series' success. I was naive enough to think it would fulfill all aspects of my life. Witty and sarcastic as his character we know and love, Perry was addicted to alcohol even before Friends. Then, three years after the show's debut, he got into a jet ski accident and was prescribed Vicodin. Hello, Dr. House. Soon, he became utterly dependent on painkillers. From the start, I liked how it made me feel, and I wanted to get more. The same year, he checked into a rehab center in Minnesota and completed a 28-day program. Unfortunately, the sobriety didn't last. In 2000, Perry relapsed and ended up spending two weeks in the hospital for pancreatitis. He lost 20 pounds, and that still wasn't enough to get him to quit drinking. I, I'm, a, I'm a drug addict. I'm a person that if I have a drink, I can't stop. And so it would be following your ideology that I'm choosing to do that, that yeah, I'm choosing. That's exactly my, not my ideology, it is my belief. Yes, you do choose. It is. Despite the people closest to him and their pleas, he just wasn't ready for it and refused to seek help until 2001. You can't tell anyone to get sober. It has to come from you, he explained. While he remembers he was out of control and very unhealthy, Matthew is adamant he wouldn't have a drop at work. Though, he often came in extreme cases of hangover. He actually has no recollection of filming specific episodes, including moments like Phoebe's surrogacy, Ross and Emily's marriage, and Monica and Chandler in Vegas. I think the answer is, I don't remember three years of it, he told BBC Radio 2 in 2016. So, none of those, somewhere between season three and six, I was a little out of it. It was coming from a man who didn't need a script while auditioning for the part of Chandler Bing. He knew the pilot by heart. How did that happen? Matthew Perry had been helping a friend when he realized that the part sounded very similar to himself in real life. Coincidence? Who knows? What we do know is that Chandler got a few traits and multiple lines from the man himself. Perry was the only one from the main cast to sit in with writers. He was so funny and witty the directors often used his suggestions on the show. It may be hard to believe, but he actually shares quite a lot with our favorite smarty pants. His parents divorced when he was a kid. Awkwardness around women was also his addition. And what was Monica's worst Thanksgiving? Oh, right, accidentally cutting off Chandler's toe. Not exactly, but yes, Matthew Perry's top right part of his middle finger is missing because his grandfather accidentally closed a car door on his finger. Generally, Perry seems like a guy who would use his wits to win an argument or get out of trouble. Well, now he is. Would you please just... <laughs> when he was in fifth grade, though, going to a public school frequented by the children of ambassadors and politicians, he beat up a kid. A kid who later became and still is the Prime Minister of Canada. Perry felt horrible about it, of course, telling the story to Jimmy Kimmel a few years ago. It probably wouldn't have been as exciting as it is years later. Justin Trudeau didn't take it to Twitter, saying he would like a rematch. 
Matthew Perry, as a gentleman with dry humor he is, politely declined the offer, having an army of friends to defend him. Chandler wasn't the only character who made the show better by having something to do with Matthew Perry. Remember the highly emotional boyfriend of Rachel, circa season six, just a love machine? <laughs> yes, we're talking about one and only Bruce Willis, who actually won an Emmy for his performance as Paul. How did they get him to join for a few episodes? We know that Brad Pitt guest starred as well, but he was married to cast member Jennifer Aniston at the time. Long story short, Matthew's whole Nine Yards co-star lost a bet and agreed to appear on Friends for free. Julia Roberts guest starring in the show wasn't an accident either. You might have heard something about writing a paper on quantum physics, right? Series creators and producers were very excited about Roberts coming in but she didn't agree to join the episode right away. According to executive producer Kevin Bright, Perry asked her to be on the show, and she told him that she'll join if he writes a paper on quantum physics. Bright assumed that Matthew went away and did it and faxed it to her the next day. It's worth mentioning that Perry and Roberts had so much chemistry on set that they ended up dating in real life shortly after filming. The relationship was fairly private, and eventually they went on to see other people. He kept up appearances for many years while filming Friends. In February 2001, while shooting Serving Sarah with Elizabeth Hurley, it hit him hard and clear. He realized that if he keeps living his life this way, there isn't going to be any life. Perry thinks battling addiction has very little to do with courage, at least at first. It's more of a life and death situation. Being blunt, a little clarity saved him. He also noted that no matter how many times your loved ones tell you they love you and want to help you, Eventually, you have to realize it yourself in order for things to happen. You ultimately surrender and realize that you need help and you ask for it, he added, talking to Oprah. After overcoming his demons, Matthew Perry decided to use his experience to give back and help others. Paying it forward, he didn't just offer the words of wisdom, some advice. He took action and remade his Malibu mansion into a sober living facility in 2013. He was also able to raise $45 million to support the funding of drug courts. Perry thinks it's nice for people to see that somebody who once struggled in their life is not struggling anymore. He also told The Hollywood Reporter that the fact that he's on TV helps people listen a bit more, and he's trying to take advantage of that once in a while. In 2015, Perry received the Phoenix Rising Award from the nonprofit drug and alcohol rehabilitation organization, Phoenix House. I've had a lot of ups and downs in my life and a lot of wonderful accolades, but the best thing about me is that if an alcoholic comes up to me and says, will you help me stop drinking? I will say, yes, I know how to do that, he shared with The Hollywood Reporter. Perry's house helped recovering addicts get back on their feet until 2016 when Matthew had to sell the house, hoping to relocate. It was too expensive to run. Unfortunately, this plan was unsuccessful and the center was permanently closed. The same year, he channeled his experience into writing a stage play called The End of Longing. He's written and produced shows before, sadly with little success, if any. This dark comedy where he played an exaggerated version of himself debuted in London on the West End in 2016, and then again off Broadway in 2017. It flew out of me, this play. I finished it in about 10 days. I guess I had something to say, he told Variety. Despite this widespread notion that people can't change, the Odd Couple star believes that they do, and he sees people changing every day. I believe that people can change in this world, sure. and there's a very common notion that people can't change, and I see people changing every day. We can assume he talks about himself as well. He had some health problems in 2018. Fortunately, they had nothing to do with substance abuse. Matthew Perry's one of those people who prefer to stay out of the spotlight. So the fans were elated as he appeared in Jennifer Aniston's first post on Instagram in October 2019. In February 2020, the man himself joined social media with his witty remarks and kind words, continuing to make people laugh and happy. And in December 2020, he released a limited, me-inspired clothing collection benefiting who and trying to make a difference. He's engaged, happy, and proud to be living a clean and healthy life these days. I'm a little older, a little wiser. I've spent a lot of time trying to get centered in my life and be a little less anxious and nervous, and I think I'm succeeding. I've done it in various ways, meditating, a lot of breathing work, self-help stuff, and it really does make a difference. We can't help but mention that during a recent appearance on The Graham Norton Show, 
David Schwimmer hinted that the actors might assume they're popular characters from the show for bits of the reunion special. I'm going to Los Angeles, we're going to be shooting uh, the Friends reunion next week. So Ooh. I'm hopping on a plane um, this afternoon or the evening. And um, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna see everyone next week for the first time in many years, so. Let's hope we can watch it soon and that Matthew Perry will be as happy with his fiance Molly Hurwitz as Chandler is with Monica.